Okay, so believe it or not, this is actually the first time I've talked to the, uh, talked to this man. We've got Dean Gladstone in the house. That was introduced from a uh, a common friend, my first podcast guest, Mr. Ryan Stag O'Connor. Dean, thanks for being here, mate. Mate, Liam, absolute pleasure. What what number am I? Uh, I think you're on number 15 now. 15? Yep, I okay. released number 8 this morning, so you'll yeah. be a, a couple of weeks away. I'm trying to release two a week. But, um, two a week? Solid. Ecstatic to have you on board, dude. Mate, my, my, my pleasure. It's, uh, you know, it's, I've, I've, had, uh, I've been on quite a few podcasts recently. It's, oh, it's really nice to talk to people and see the way they think. And, um, yeah, I, I always learn... Learn something. Am I your first Canadian podcast? I live up in Canada. You are my first Canadian podcast. We go. Uh, it was funny us trying to work out the time difference with the with the fourteen hours. I I am a shocker. Like uh, you think I would be used to it, keeping in touch with family in Australia and family in New Zealand, but you just never get used to it. I always think, oh, you know, it's 14 hours back and then I add it and yeah. it goes to the day before and day after. It's all over the show. Mate, I don't, I don't know enough about you. I've done my research. I've done my homework. I've listened to a couple of podcasts. But for the people listening and watching, can you tell us a little bit about your journey to uh, discovering this amazing thing that you did for Ryan O'Connor that took his breath away, which was yep. simply bringing his breath back and teaching him how to breathe properly? Yeah, it's, it's interesting. I, I call my courses now the power of the breath. But um, I guess, you know, way back, I was an asthmatic as a child. And it was when I stopped swimming training. And as we look back now, I'm super grateful for this because if I wasn't, if I didn't have that asthma, I wouldn't have gone back to swimming and my life certainly couldn't possibly be where it is now. But that, um, that asthma keeps, keeps me swimming and which led to my sort of career as a lifeguard and being able to help people and, and be on TV. And um, that's another journey and another story partly in itself. But the, um, yeah, the restricted breathing I had when I wasn't swimming training, um, yeah, was really restrictive. I was un unable to do other sports, play footy, run rounds, you know, anything wasn't as good when I wasn't swimming training. And it was that sort of intermittent hypoxic training, that regulated breath, that, um, that slowing down of the breath, that swimming, that, that they recommend asthma for, for kids. And, um, you know, sort of fast forward, uh, I kept swimming, you know, on and off throughout my life. I found, I started doing yoga and teaching a little bit of yoga and eventually becoming a yoga teacher. And it was the breath with the movement, apart from the fact that I was super, super tight hamstrings and I could barely touch my knees. But, and, I know, you know what it feels like. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah, I found when I did yoga, I could... I didn't have to rely on the swimming to maintain uh, the fitness. Um, and then I discovered this Wim Hof stuff and that just sort of took it up a level, you know, that really sort of lifted my, um, my energy levels in the morning. I, I reckon 20, 30, 40% sometimes when I felt flat. And I dived deeper into, into the breathing stuff. And it's been a real sort of passion and a focus of mine. I'm a person, I'm a bit of a jack of all trades, really. Um, you know, I've been a, a career lifeguard, but I'm sort of focusing on health and wellness industry, I guess. Um, and in that, you know, I do a little bit of everything, but teaching breath work is, is possibly my favourite thing to do. It's um, so funny. I was a high-end competitive swimmer most of my younger days as well. And the yeah, amount cool. of um, kids that get put into swimming lessons purely for that reason, to improve the breath. Have you ever sort of narrowed it down? Because do you suffer from asthma now or would you say that you're totally fine? Yeah, no, my, my asthma's long gone. I think, yeah, in the last couple of years sort of, understanding it i um i used to get a little tiny bit of it when i get a cold or the flu but um you know i, don't, I rarely get sick these days and i shouldn't say that because i'll probably come down with something awful touch, but, wood. Uh, touch wood 
but yeah, um, yeah, even even then, I don't get tight chested. Um, I don't know if you've read the Oxygen Advantage, but I've studied under Patrick McEwen, and he's um, he's an awesome guy, and he's put that much that much good information into this world. And I'm, I'm actually seeing for the first time, and hopefully, be able to help. Uh, a young kid at swimming training that's unable to breathe through his nose. He swims with my kids. So I'm actually sort of treating um, kids um, with sort of breathing pattern disorders um, today. So it's really exciting to see where this can evolve. And, you know, if I can change this young man's ability to breathe at 11 or 12, it'll really influence not only the way his face develops, but his whole life. Yeah. I'm just going to write down something here because I, I, I've, one thing I've learned in these podcasts is I get very excited and I get all these questions all at once and I forget them. My first question, let's stay with Patrick because I did uh, listen to that whole podcast that you sent me and I think it's absolutely fabulous. Actually, we'll be able to link the two questions together probably. I love how Patrick was talking hugely about children not breathing properly from a young age, not yep. getting the proper jaw development, hence that they never really are able to breathe through the nose properly. Looking at yourself from your swimming days and suffering from asthma, have you A, been able to diagnose what, what brought on your asthma? And then if you could talk more about what Patrick's talking about with the development of the jaw. Yeah, Liam, so, um, you know, pre, you know, I want to acknowledge all my teachers here. And one of them was a very important guy named Paul Check. Yeah, um, I, I, I love Paul. He's um, <laughs> and Paul, you know, long before Wim Hof and even before, I was teaching a little bit of yoga, but I wasn't trained. Paul talked a lot about the sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system. He was big on nasal breathing, still is. He's a, he is an absolute guru. So yeah, my awareness of mouth breathing and non-diaphragmatic breathing, and when, you swim, when you're a swimmer, you actually breathe through your mouth when you train. So whilst that is good for asthma in one sense, it's sort of training, training mouth breathing as well. So it's important to train swimmers to breathe through their nose when they're not when they're not swimming. Um, and the uh, the mouth taping, I don't know, have you experimented with any mouth taping, mate? Yeah, it's, um, I, I work at a, well, worked, we just got shut down completely at a uh, residential rehabilitation centre and we're big on breath. So we yep. actually um, have the, the mouth taping device with the, the emergency yep. breath valve, uh, yep. just in case, and we, we give it to the clients um, because the focus is actually to try and do it while you're sleeping. However, we don't let them do it while they're with us just for safety. <laughs> yeah, cool. Yeah, so yeah, it's, um, yeah, you know, it seems that that mouth breathing all night, even though, you know, I'm super aware of it, I was still slipping back to some mouth breathing over the night and a little piece of tape from here to here over over the mouth, which, which I've done before. Um, you know, I believe my dentists and, um, the holistic people, um, you know, it wasn't the first time I'd done it when, when, we, when I sort of went through the course with Patrick and, and he had us doing it. And again, I pass that on to people I work with just, just to see if it makes a difference and, and works for people. And some people, my girlfriend, um, she's a natural nasal breather and then others, you know, aren't, aren't such natural nasal breathers. And I think, you know, like myself, um, I needed a little bit of help she says my sleep apnea and my sleep has improved out of sight. Now I feel better than ever, but if you, you link that back to school, I struggled at school. I was dyslexic. I, uh, I never actually picked up the alphabet until, um, and that was sort of embarrassing for me to talk about um, when I was younger, but I, I never, I used to get confused um, around the um, STW bit and um, so I only, I only knew the first half of the alphabet. Then I used to get a little bit lost and knew it ended with an X, Y, Z. But when I was an apprentice plumber and I was looking for streets, it used to take me ages to flick through the street directory. So I had to actually teach myself the alphabet after I left school. And, um, you know, in the last five, 10 years, I feel that I've got much, much smarter. Um, 
you know, I, I, I never thought I would be teaching other people, facilitating, um, writing blogs. And it's, yeah, it's, um, I feel like I've come a long way from a boy that certainly struggled um, to, to spell and, and write. <laughs> <laughs> and my handwriting's still awful, by the way. <laughs> well, it can't be any worse than the kids of this day and age, mate. It's atrocious. Yeah. Hey, um, yeah, so getting back to that question, what is it that, because it, it's, it's kind of hard to understand, because you would think being a mouth breather that the jaw would develop stronger because that's where we're breathing from. Yet, if we do breathe from the mouth, it's affecting the development of the jaw. Is that correct? Yeah, it gets a bit technical and, and that's not my expertise. I believe it has something to do with the tongue placement in the roof of the mouth, which is super important. You want that tongue up nice and high. And I think that puts pressure and enables the jaw to, to grow properly and keeps the airways nice and wide. Mm. Uh, and if those airways narrow, we tend to gasp for air and our, we, our neck just sort of drops back at night and our airway can block. Um, there's no sort of tongue blocking the airway type thing which was sort of a common misconception but yeah, yeah. where snoring yeah. sort of comes from isn't it yeah it's that and if you try and actually snore you try and make that noise with your nose it's much more difficult to make so it's yeah, yeah there's so many sort of ways to play with it and you know i sort of teach and, and share basically a multitude of things that i picked up and and played with it over the years and it's different things that work for different people so can you sort of explain because i know patrick's with uh is it boteco is that how you say yeah it? so patrick studied the boteco which he, he's a he was a russian doctor and he noticed people that were unwell were consistently breathing um that had an increased respiratory rate and they were breathing through the mouth and sort of he wanted to correlate the two. Was it that the fact that they were unwell, that they were breathing through the mouth, or the fact that they were breathing through the mouth that was linking to them being unwell? Mm. So he, he started to get people nasal breathing. Um, and this goes back to you. Do you remember, did they touch on the bore effect in the podcast that you listened to? No. no. So the bore effect is the relationship between the um, oxygen and in the blood and the CO2, the carbon dioxide. And people sort of write that off as a waste gas. But if you're over breathing or breathing a lot, you're breathing in lots of oxygen, but there's, um, there's not enough CO2 in the body. And uh, I, I, I don't articulate this well, but um, you need CO2 in the body to release ox oxygen in the blood to, to transfer those gases. And, um, you know, it's quite difficult for people to get their head around and, you know, it may be worth investigating it a little bit further if it's something that does interest you. But this is why when we breathe through the nose and we're getting not as much oxygen in, because we can get much more in when we breathe through our mouth. We all do it when we exercise. This is why breathing through the nose actually is more efficient because it, it, keeps, it keeps more CO2 in, in the body and enables a better exchange of oxygen in the blood. Yeah, that's exactly it, isn't it? Yeah, I've done quite a bit of work on this sort of stuff. The carbon dioxide makes it more easy for the hemoglobin yeah. to release of the oxygen. And then, like you said, we, we end up utilising more of it. Yeah, you, you explain it better than me. <laughs> so that's oh, the ball effect. And that was discovered in 1903 or 1904 by a Danish biochemist. So it's, it's not new. This stuff's been around. And when you think the yogis... Were, were sort of aware of this stuff five, 8,000 years ago, possibly. And, um, and they were sort of moving with the breath and quite aware of what it did for the mind and the body. Yeah, and pa Patrick talks a lot about, um, you know, uh, paleo man. And effectively, they were probably running around on the, the plains of the desert or in the jungles or wherever they were, actually predominantly nasal breathing themselves. Yeah, it's, um, it's fascinating, isn't it, to think. And, uh, and that, uh, apparently, according to the, um, the, the studies or the, you know, the, um, the, the bone structures, they were able to see that they, they had a nice wide jaw structure. Hmm. Now, I, I had eight teeth um, removed. And I, I, think, I think you maybe asked earlier why that was. Now, I wasn't breastfed 
as a child and there's a couple of things um possibly nutritionally that that i didn't receive that that other people might have and um you know my mum was pretty young when we had when um i was born and there was a bit of pressure back then for um they were promoting um bottle bottle stuff yeah um so yeah it's it's really really scary there was a big push um for for, for baby formula and um and for mothers not to breastfeed and, and now we know that's crazy but um yeah there's some sort of weird and wonderful things happening in, in the world um well, that have happened before i find it's it's happening with everything right you in your nutrition world we went through the lipid lie but then fat became popular again um if you're interested in that side of things you know psychedelics were a common medicinal use and then they got pushed away we were breathing from the nose and then we went breathing to the mouth and now we're going back to the nose it's it's crazy how society just jumps onto one thing thinking it's the right thing to do without really probably doing as much research as they should yeah mate you um you said it it's um yeah, so the, the breathing is a huge part of it, but it's not the only part of it. You know, you need to, you need the diet, you need the, the mental capacity, um, you need exercise, you know, you've got to bring, tie it all in together. And um, so I know you're a big Wim Hof man and you're a big uh, Bateko man. Can you sort of explain the difference between the two? Yeah, very, they're very different methods. The, um, the Wim Hof method involves um, superventilation or hyperventilation. And there's a couple of, couple of methods. Have you, have, you done, have you heard about Stan Groff? No. He, he does holotropic breathing. And Stan, um, Stan was treating people, and it's the, the fact that you said psychedelics bring this, brings this up to me. Stan was treating people with psychedelics. He was a doctor. Stan, Stanny, anyway, I can't pronounce his full name, but he was treating people with psychedelics and he was having an amazing result. And obviously the medical community wasn't big on treating people with uh, natural psychedelics, so they sort of squashed it. But he found he was able to get people into a similar state through breath. So he has a, a holotropic breath work, which is similar to Wim Hof. And there's a couple of types of superventilation. The Wim Hof one is um, particularly sort of sexy at the moment and popular and uh, Wim Hof is different because he ties some cold work cold um cold therapy into it as well and um and that works really nicely together so huge fan of Wim Hof's work but um yeah the 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 difference between uh Wim Hof breathing and and Bateko breathing is one is super fast and the other is super slow. So in Wim Hof, you're actually blowing out a lot of CO2. You're <laughs> and in Bateko, you're actually sort of really small nasal sips of air. And interestingly enough, Wim breathes in and out through his mouth, which I don't, which I don't recommend that anyone does in my courses. And um, I think there's room for both. Um, the 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 way someone can co connect with their breath through one session or 15 minutes of Wim Hof breathing is, is the most efficient way that I've seen to, to sell breathing to someone. And once they're in, then, then they're in and, and they can understand and feel their body so much better. And that may open a door for all sorts of natural therapies and remedies and, um, you know, the use of ice bathing and, and stuff like this. And I've seen anecdotally people change their lives. Um, I've had people hugging and kissing me and crying me and say, you've changed my life. And it's like, you know, it's not me. It's, you know, you did it. So it's, um, yeah, it's, it's quite beautiful. Very, they're very different methods, but um, like different forms of exercise, I think there's room for, for different forms of breath work. For sure. That, that, I mean, that's a, a great, um, a great comparison right there. Right. Like, if you if you train one way too much in the physical realm then your body just adapts so why not the same applies for the breath the um so with the wim hof you, uh, you did make a uh, note of the ice work as well do the two work simultaneously together or can you do them independent of each 
Yes, yeah, so uh, breath work, you know, it's scientifically validated it works. It's been around for thousands of years. Cold therapy as well, or cold thermogenesis. Um, and I actually, my first ice bath was after an injury in Bali. I don't know if you ever saw those. Uh, so it's actually on my list because your blog mentions it, but then it doesn't yeah. really go into it in detail. So if you'd love to share that story, I'd love to hear it. Yeah, so my first ice bath, um, I, had, I had two toes ripped off in a motorbike accident in Bali and my pinky toe was pretty much gone. And um, I ended up in hospital. I'd been living so in Bali um, before. We actually filmed a TV show over there, Bondo Rescue Bali. Um, we did one year. So I knew where, where to go, what to do. Um, I, was, I had credit cards. I was getting the doctors to operate. Anyway, they put my toes back on. Uh, long story short, it was very close whether the toes would survive. Um, it was very touch and go. I was praying, I was meditating, I was doing breath work, I was doing everything I could, and I was doing a lot of research on the internet, and I found cold th thermogenesis. And there was a guy called Dr. Jack Cruz. And, um, yeah, there was some great work on healing the body through the power of cold. And, um, yeah, my first ice bath was sort of praying that my toes would survive and um, I'd be able to lead a sort of, you know, it wouldn't have been the end of the world if I lost a pinky toe. I would have still been able to do a lot of things, but um, I didn't want to go back into hospital and have the operation and have the infection and, and go through that part of it. And I sort of wanted to have sort of most of my body parts because we're, we're given them. <laughs> so yeah, um, yeah, through through ice therapy and some other modalities as well, I was able to to heal the body with um, with um, with natural therapies. That's amazing as well, right? Because you know, a lot of the time we say you hear in this day and age how important the heat packs are to promote blood flow, and blood flow is a thing that's going to you know repair muscles and repair injury a lot faster so now we have this this other side of the coin again where actually ice is probably just as beneficial yeah so they're 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 both hormet hormetic stresses on the body and exercise is one as well so in a controlled dose um people respond positively to a hormet hormetic stress um exercise heat uh and ice but um you know, the way I understand it is in this day of, of modern age and creature comforts, we're getting warm, we've got electric blankets, we've got fancy jackets, we're not getting in the cold as much as we did as we've evolved in the last, you know, thousands or hundreds of thousands of years. Yeah. And, um, you know, I make the analogy, um, some people respond really well to be being barefoot or barefoot shoes. And... And similar to intermittent fasting, which is another thing I'm a fan of, again, sort of taking, taking a step back or peeling a layer off and taking those creature comforts away, we see people respond really positive to it. So being in the cold, we, you know, we, we do see a, a good response from some people. Um, skipping a meal, again, we see a good response. Taking away these weird, fancy shoes with this much heel on them and getting back to nature and barefoot and being able to try and spread our toes a little bit, we, we, see, a, we see a good response. So there, there are a couple of analogies that I like to make. Um, does that make sense? Yeah, that makes, I mean, it's, it makes perfect sense. And, you know, everyone that I've sort of had on board lately talks much like yourself about it's all one jigsaw puzzle, the thing that I, I mainly get people on to talk about like yourself with the breathing but then everybody naturally goes well you can't forget about that 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 that, 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 that as well which uh, you know if everybody keeps going that way then hopefully a the world's changing and b we're on the right path yeah well that's the beautiful thing about the Wim Hof method it's not one thing you've got the breath work which is fantastic in itself but you're tying in the cold therapy and he calls the third component the mindset, which is sort of having the um, mental, um, the mental push or the effort to, to do it. And, and the three things tie really nicely together. So could you talk us through, say, like a, a, a typical Wim Hof session for yourself? So uh, I, 
if you want to contribute both the breathing and the the ice just so everyone sort of gets a a, a Wim Hof session in a nutshell I guess <laughs> yeah so for me I don't there's when I became a Wim Hof instructor they like you to do teach a certain way and there wasn't enough functional breathing in it for me there wasn't enough emphasis on nasal breathing yep um and you know I, I even like to touch on the bore effect and some of the science which Wim Wim never actually spoke about uh, quite confusingly Wim talked a lot about oxygenating the body during his breath work method and it's actually the opposite is true you yeah. actually go quite hypoxic when you're doing the Wim Hof method um, and, I, and I have people tell me all the time it's oh it's the oxygen um, in your body and it, it, it's not it's it's changing those gases and and the co2 in the body so uh, my courses involve functional breathing because they're the people the mouth breathers that i've had they're the people's lives that i can change the most um and i've had sort of countless stories where they come in and they're like oh i breathe through my mouth and oh yeah i wake up dry and i don't sleep well and i snore and it's you know the messages that you get from them are are really really cool because you know you're making a huge difference in their life so I really generally spend an hour on functional breathing you know there's posture in there as well um, there's uh, you know some warm-up or mobility because it's nice to get the rib cage um, moving and mobile before a breathwork session that aids to a breathwork session um, and then yeah sort of getting hands-on and and a diaphragmatic breath teaching that that's a yoga sort of breath and then you know maybe even teaching some alternate nostril breathing and i, I really when i teach wim hof or super ventilation it, it's always in through the nose for me and then i lead into a wim hof component of my course and then finish with some cold therapy so there's sort of three components that i break it break it into when you say you, you have some really great successes, what are the sort of successes that you're talking about? Like what are people sort of working through? Uh, one, of the, one of the mums that I had recently, she was, she was a mouth breather. She was struggling to run five kilometres. We, after one Wim Hof session and more importantly, some nasal breathing, uh, she ran 10 kilometres the next day. So she, wow. she doubled, doubled her performance. But um, in health these days, sleeping well is, is pretty much one of the number one things that's talked about. If you breathe better, you sleep better. Mm. It's as simple as that. If you breathe better, you wake up in the morning, you feel better, you're more likely to exercise. You're more likely to eat a healthier breakfast. Um, so the flow on effects through that are just, um, yeah, they're just really pleasing. You know, you, you see people sort of changing their lives. Um, they're, they're exercising, they're eating well. And, um, and this flows on to their family and, um, and on and on and their kids. It's just, yeah, it's really pleasing for me to, to be able to influence and share things that, that work for me and see it work for them. And I think one of the things that, you know, I love the way that you're tying in the sleeping, once again, you know, like going off into other areas that it affects. But I think a, a lot of people don't realize that all these little simple things that you're working on through the breath, how it affects the sleep. If you have better sleep, you're probably going to be much more adverse to, you know, the stresses in your life because your brain is going to be functioning better. And then, like you said, you're going to exercise more. So your body's, and then the next thing you know, instead of this downward spiral, you've got the upward spiral happening. Yeah, amazing. Um, your positivity breeds positivity. And it's, and it's the, the Wim Hof method or the breath is just enables people to connect with their body like they haven't done before. And, and um, yeah, people lose touch with their bodies, right? Yeah, I'm sure you see it. And if you can bring it back, and, and it doesn't matter which way you bring it back, exercise, nutrition, breathing, cold therapy, and yeah, connect them with their body and inspire them to, to look and feel better. And, and they're on the journey, man.
Yeah. So all this breath work over the years and, and being the, uh, the celebrity that you are on Bondi Beach, the, uh, the breath work must have helped in the, the surf life-saving realm of life as well? Well, absolutely. I'm able to apply stuff that I've learnt now and, and that's scientifically validated and understand why I was already doing things or why, um, why other professionals and, and how they act. And, um, you know, for instance, there's nothing more important that we do than we do than, than trying to bring someone back to life that's, that's either drowned, had a heart attack, um, and in some cases committed suicide. Um, and it's, it's remaining cool and calm in that situation and being able to collect all your thoughts because everyone is very different and, and being able to give that person every chance. And there's nothing more important or nothing better for me that I've done than bringing someone back to life. And if I could bottle that and sell it, it would be the most amazing, most amazing drug ever. Because yeah. the adrenaline that's flowing through your body as you as you literally have someone's life in your hands is is phenomenal. And like we were just talking about stress, like man, whether you save them or you don't save them, the stress in both situations must be hor horrific. So to be in in control of that breath while you're in the situation, I could only see being a huge advantage. Yeah, that's that's another big part. Of, of the courses that I teach it's understanding those those nervous systems and you know when we go into fight or flight and that's the sympathetic nervous system and then trying to come back to the parasympathetic nervous system the rest and digest and it's interesting the Wim Hof sort of modulates between the two systems um, it's quite aggressive and very different to other forms of meditation when you think of people sort of trying to bliss out and trying to be in Zen and trying to relax the body, the Wim Hof method, um, particularly the super ventilation or the aggressive breath work, the <laughs> that actually stimulates the fight or flight response and stress hormones in the blood. So yeah, it's, um, it's very different to what most people picture um, sort of relaxing or, or meditation or, or, or that type of breath work. But it's funny how that works as well, because so I, I meditate every day and I actually, so my, my meditation practice is I, I do a 10 minute, 10% um, uh, guided meditation, Dan Harris is at, and I can okay. never shut this monkey mind of mine up. Like that's where it's, I'm just trying to get into the zone. I'm trying to get into the zone. If I wander, that's meditation. That's fine. Yeah. And then from there, I go into my Wim Hof breathing. And I find Wim Hof is actually the thing that settles my mind because I'm so distracted with working on the breath. And I guess, I don't know, the, the amount of oxygen or lack of oxygen that becomes in the body, I get really, really mellow. Like, how, how would that work in my situation? Or do I have that right at all? Or Yeah, so it's when you go into the breath holds, that stimulates... That, that relaxation response. Yeah. And I think the first time someone does Wim Hof, or particularly when they come to one of my workshops, they're quite nervous or excited about it. So it can take them pretty high. But as you develop a more regular practice, it's quite controlled. The hyperventilation or superventilation is, is a conscious breath. You're doing it intentionally it's not like you're you're freaking out and you're you know it's you're controlling that so you're modulating those two responses of the body and um yeah you're in control through it and um yeah you're able to access and, and change the the blood flow to your brain to um to the spot that that can release um dmt which is like a psychedelic or it is a psychedelic so yeah, we're changing the blood flow to your brain and you're, you're sort of going into a different place. Um, that's one of the possible explanations. There's no exact scientific ex explanation of what, what happens. There's many possible causes. But, yeah, we have people seeing colours and ears buzzing and, and hands cramping. There's, there's a whole range of weird and wonderful effects that, that people really enjoy. And once again, it makes total sense, the breath hold stuff, because... 
I guess from my years of swimming as well, I actually really, really enjoy that. Um, just because I haven't had no formal coaching and in, in, in that sort of breathing, the Wim Hof style, when you're holding your breath, are, are you trying to hold it for as long as you can? Like, because I have this problem with competitiveness and I'm always trying to go a little bit longer, a little farther, a little longer, a little further. Is that advantageous or am I sort of disadvantaging myself there? Um, yes and no. Um, so, so again, different things work for different people. So without a push, some people won't do it at all. Um, whereas other people, the, the clock can be, um, can be can be not great for them. I notice, and, and other other people notice, and it's sort of documented um, how well you're feeling, how much sleep you had, how much stress you're under is going to affect your ability to hold your breath. Yep. So I don't know on some days that you sort of maybe tap out somewhere towards a minute, then other days you're getting up towards three. I don't know if you had that experience, but mm. um, there's certainly a broad range there. As you go further into each round, um, your spleen releases oxygen-rich blood into the body, enabling you to hold your breath longer. So generally, people's breath holds improve as they go as well. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And um, yeah, I, if you have any contacts out here for anything, actually, I should probably just jump on your online course would probably be a better idea. But yeah, I'm really excited. Like I've been loving it. And uh, it's funny, all the ice work and that as well. I had a, um, a boxing friend back in the day when we were in our teens and he would always say, you know, cold showers, cold showers. That's where it's, I'd be like, you, are you crazy? Like, what does that do for you? But yet once again, you know, this is mm. years and years ago and, and they were using it back then as part of their training. So it's super exciting. Yeah. It's uh, yeah. The cold shower thing's been around for a while as well. It's sort of one of the habits of successful people and, um, yeah, there's people, you know, my grandfather, dad said grandfather, my grandfather used to have cold showers and I believe it dates back to Roman days. Some doctors would, um, you know, recommend a cold bath for people, but, um, yeah, none of these things are new and they're, they're easily accessible for people. And, um, yeah, we can control our breath and, and breathe better and, and think better and act better. The, the world's going to be a better place. Yeah. And. I, lo I like that you said, you know, like if you really look at it, there's so many people that are successful using all these sort of strategies and methods now to to optimize themselves. One that screams out to me is, uh, you know, in the surfing world, your, your buddy Led Hamilton. Yeah. Like, yeah, well, it's big for the surfers. Like they need to be able to, and again, that's got, you touched on the stress response before. And I talked about bringing someone back to life. When there's a 20 foot wave pounding you to the bottom, um, there's a similar stress response going through your body. And uh, I've actually, I wrote a, a pretty cool blog on this as well. Um, what you want to do is counterproductive because you want to get back up to the surface as quick as possible. What you actually need to do is lay down there, try and lower that heart rate and just relax. Mm -hmm. And because you cannot get, no matter how much you want to get up, you're not going to be able to. And if you try, you could potentially die. Um, yeah, so you just got to try and relax, keep that heart rate low, utilise the oxygen as best you can and wait for your time to come up. So it's, it's, there's a similar response. So a lot of these things I'd been doing intuitively and then to learn the science behind it, uh, I'm able to sort of share real life stories and 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 put the science behind them a little bit. So it's, it's um, yeah, it's been great to experience stuff and then learn, oh yeah, that's why I do stuff. Yeah. Hey, um, so I just, this just triggered my thought process as well, because I know Laird is very, you know, big on obviously the breath hold and the deep water work that he's doing under the water training. He's into the cold ice baths, but he's also into like extreme heats. Have you ever played yeah. with the, 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 the other end of the spectrum yourself? Yeah, my preference has always been heat. Um, I was always scared of the cold, um, which is actually sort of partly why it inspired me to go and, go and climb a mountain with Wim Hof in Poland because I wanted to pick something that, that scared the shit out of me. Nice. Um, yeah, so that was that was part of my 
reason to do it. I would much rather sit in a sauna than sit in an ice bath. I think most but, people would. <laughs> but getting out of the ice bath, once you've co conquered, I, I don't know if conquered's the right word, but post to ice bath, it's similar, I guess, fasting's not fun as well, but after the fast, you feel amazing. Yeah. So you know, you know the benefits are there. And, you know, from someone, you know, I used to get sick a lot. Um, the first winter I got through that I didn't get, I didn't get sick, you know, it's an, it's an amazing feeling. And, um, yeah, you, your health, people take it for granted. But once it's taken away, it's, it's, it's pretty, it's not much fun. No, and I mean, gosh, uh, there's uh, no time like the prison that's uh, screaming that loud from the, the top of the mountains, right? Yeah, there's a, a real emphasis at the moment on, well, there's not enough, not enough emphasis on health. There's lots of talks about um, medications, which we, we probably don't want to delve into. But yeah, taking control of your own health is, is something that I think everyone should do. And relying on other people for, for it is, is not... Um, it's not what I'm about. No, and, you know, the ice and, and, and the breath work together. I mean, uh, Wim's proven what that can do for one's immunities. Yeah, that absolutely put Wim on the map. Um, I think it was a 2011 study. Did I send it to you? I'm not, not that sure. one, no. I have, I have oh. seen it. Yeah, yeah, so that's, yeah, and that, um, that really put Wim on the map that was able to, um, to prove that he could influence his immune system. And, um, you know, I guess, but again, people have been saying, oh, you know, you know, gratitude and gratitude diaries and all these things now, they're starting, there's new sciences behind them, epigenetics and neuroplasticity. So it's a really exciting time we live in. Um, even though these techniques, some of them have been around for thousands of years, it's actually now that we can quantify and, and qualify them through science that, um, that some people believe them, which is, which is I guess... I don't know. Is it sad or not? Yeah, it's it's the, the world we live in. It's crazy, right? Everyone is working towards computers taking over. We're the the you know we're the own, the master of our own destiny, and we haven't even got that part right yet, have we? Yeah, you know, it's good that people question stuff, but um, yeah, each yeah, I, I you know, I don't know. There's no right or wrong answer sometimes. No, but, um, that's why life's a, a trip, right? Like we, we have this choice to go out there and experiment and that experiment of one N equals one and work out, you know, what works best for us instead of just jumping on the bandwagon like uh, a, a lot of society unfortunately is these days. Yeah. Hey, um, just to tie it all together, uh, so... Maybe if you could give us one or two little practical practices that we could maybe start to put in place in our lives to start the journey of getting better at breathing before we sign up for your course, that is. Yeah, cool. Um, so, that you know, if, if you want to do a free Wim Hof demo, there's one on his website. Yep. And Wim talks you through, there's all the, there's all the safety, um, safety demonstrations. I, there's a, a little link on my YouTube page, the three-part breath that I teach. So I'll um, I'll send that to you, and you can you can put it, that in the link. And that's that's activating the diaphragm when you breathe. So if you're if you're breathing, you know I, I don't like seeing people doing the Wim Hof method if they're not breathing correctly in the first place, because that's not going to help. And, and and whatever method they're doing. Um, it may be some other form of breathing. So breathing with the diaphragm is super important. That's our main breathing muscle. Um, so yeah, teaching people to breathe with the diaphragm and then with the, uh, with the nose, um, that'll go a long way in setting you up. Um, yeah, if you're keen to try Wim Hof and charge the body up, absolutely, give it a go. Um, yeah, I recommend everybody give, give a couple of things a go once. Cold showers are great, really wakes the body up. Um, increases thermogenesis, um, increases, you know, if you're trying to lose weight, a couple of cold showers is really going to kickstart that metabolism in the morning. So, yeah, there's a, there's a, there's a couple of things there that, um, you know, if, if anything appeals to anyone or think, oh, I might like to try that, um, give it a go. And more importantly, what do you got to lose? It's, it's yeah. a breath. We take them all day, every day, right? So you may as well try a couple of different ones to see how they work there. 
Yeah, 26,000. A day? Is, is, that's the rough number, yeah. So if you're breathing incorrectly, um, I work with a podiatrist and, you know, some of us take 10 to 14,000 steps a day and he's like, oh, the breath is more important than the steps. I'm like, whoa. Um, and, and he's learnt that. Um, so, yeah, getting, getting that breath is, is fundamental to life. Yeah, we, we at work, we teach a lot about the resonant breathing rate and we get clients to play around with that. And obviously, when you do that, you try me being competitive to the best that I can do, right? But to hear yeah. 26,000 breaths on average a day, that's, that's a huge amount. And most of those, for most people, I guess, are inefficient, unoptimized, mm. useless breathing patterns that just proves that we actually should be putting it uh, together as a, as a practice. Yeah, well, uh, uh, you know, people can get through life breathing um, not the best, but when, yeah, when you optimise something so simple, it's, um, yeah, it's absolutely amazing. Actually, I just, uh, just one last question before you go there, because I, I remembered you saying, and I forgot to bring it up, taping the breath at night time, uh, you know, to, to accentuate the nasal breath. It's to my understanding that like 70% of detoxification happens through the breath. So would that breathing through the nose, does that affect that detoxification rate or is that something that you're not too sure about? Absolutely. Breathing through the nose is, will not only keep you healthy. When you breathe through the nose, the nose has like a filter in it and it releases something called nitric oxide. And I don't know if you touched on that. Yeah, um, Patrick did the soft pal palate uh, on the roof of the mouth. Yeah, so not nitric oxide, which is released in the nasal cavity predominantly, it's a natural antiseptic. So let's take coronavirus, for example. If you're breathing through the mouth next to someone with coronavirus, you're more likely to get it as opposed to breathing through the nose. Um, let's talk about um, some, I don't know, dust particles or something toxic. If you breathe it in through the mouth, it goes into your lungs and it takes the body possibly months to get rid of it. If you breathe in through the nose, um, the cilia, uh, which are those little nasal hairs in the body, are able to pick up the majority of it. And, you're, and that, you can, that can run down your throat and you can... Um, evacuate that from the body within days so yeah absolutely that's sort of detoxifying when we're breathing in toxins or or bacteria um, so that absolutely helps but yeah breathing in and out through the nose um, decreases decreases water loss so when we're breathing through the mouth we can become dehydrated quicker um, yeah if you, if you wake up with a dry mouth in the morning you're probably mouth breathing sometime during the night Mm -hmm. and um and when i wake up with a dry mouth i don't feel that i've slept as well so i'm more likely to feel lethargic and so a little bit of tape you know you're not wrapping tape around your head it's just from sort of underneath your nose just to your chin um and it's a soft white tape and you can still breathe through your mouth if you had to when i take and if that feels too uncomfortable you could maybe build up and take your mouth while you watch a movie or a tv show for an yeah. hour or two at night and just see how that feels. And if that and, and if, if that does make you feel a little bit nervous, then um, there's a big chance you should um, focus on your breath and try and slow it down and, and just check out what's going on there because they're the people that I've seen most improvement. Dude, uh, I'm just very grateful that uh, I chucked in that last question because there was a whole lot of knowledge bombs right there. Thank you so much for your time today, buddy. I, I know you're a busy man and... Uh, I appreciate you for everything that you've given us today. And I hope that that beautiful scenery behind you right now yeah. is literally out the window and you're going to go get amongst it. Yeah, first day of winter in Australia or second day of winter. So it's um, yeah, a little bit cold, a little bit cold, not quite the uh, sunny, sunny days. But um, Don't get me started, Dean. Don't get me started. <laughs> we, we had snow still two weeks ago. Wow. The coldest day I've had here up in uh, Ontario with wind chill, I think, is minus 47 Celsius. Minus 47. 
Yes. My ice baths at the moment are about two kilometres that way, straight in the lake. It's sitting at six degrees at the moment. Wow. So lucky. Yeah, it's perfect, right? <laughs> so many of my Wim Hof friends would love to have some resource like that, a natural resource to just go and sit in the lake. Dude, it's, a, da- it's a daily practice and I owe it all to, you know, people like yourself for just spreading that word and getting it out to to us mere mortals. Yeah, well, you know, it's it's beautiful to, to see people doing it, you know, and see people's physical and mental health improve and... You know, I, I assume you want to inspire others and um, and help other people. And, and as a lifeguard, I was lucky to do that. And, and now sort of training people and, and coaching people to improve their breath work again, I'm, um, I'm really grateful to be able to inspire and help people, man. And, and uh, you're doing the same. Thanks very much. Thank you. Yeah, it's fantastic. I will get all your links off you and I'll drop them to the people uh, because there's going to be a whole lot of people that are going to want to start breathing from their nose after listening yeah. to this one. Yeah, awesome. All right, thanks, buddy. See you later.